We're all interested in the migrant crisis. We saw what was going on over there in Chicago with Brandon Johnson, where they're sending migrants from Texas and Arizona, flooding, flooding the streets of Chicago with migrants. But also over there uh, in, in New York City, the nation's largest city, uh, they've been bombarded and flooded also with migrants. And Eric Adams, he was once a proponent and was a champion, champion these immigrants coming into America, coming into New York City. But now he's been getting a lot of pushback from the people of New York City. Um, to me, Brandon Johnson, the Eric Adams, these black mayors, these are one-term mayors. These are guys that they put in this position to take the fall on the sword and take all the heat. But Brandon, I mean, uh, uh, Adams is now cutting funding to the migrants when he's seeing how these people are living, uh, the stuff that's been going on. Let's just check out, check out what he's saying now and how he's back checking. Check it out. You're not going to see some of those draconian steps that we were going to have to take that will get in the way of the cleanliness and the safety of our city. So you say it's good news. It's great news. Uh, Mayor Adams news. says New Yorkers actually, should feel relieved. Uh, After two rounds of punishing budget cuts to all but the most essential city services, the budget is stabilizing and a planned third round will no longer be necessary. What does it mean for New Yorkers? How should people look at this, Mayor? Well, if we had to do the third rounds, it would impact garbage pickup. It would impact uh, services to our older adults. It would impact libraries. It would impact a series of services that you would actually see the difference. In an exclusive Eyewitness News interview, Mayor Adams announced that funding for asylum seekers will be cut back by 10% on top of a previous 20% cut for nearly one third cut back on city spending for migrants. When we inherited this, we were in an emergency state Emergency conditions cost more money. We're now transitioning into a stabilized state because this is going to be here for a while. So by doing that, we can renegotiate contracts. We can look at long-term planning. We're not using this as an emergency. Although we're in a crisis status, we're treating it differently because the emergency still exists, but we are managing it differently. So now Eric Adams is all the way backtracking. And he's saying that we need to cut uh, the budget. We need to cut spending. Um, you know, we're not taking care of the city. All of a sudden, we're not taking care of the city. Uh, there's trash that needs to be picked up. Uh, there's just so many things that need to go on in, in, in New York City that's being neglected because of the migrant crisis. So now he's 100% back on board on focusing on the citizens. But it's gotten so bad that even Stephen A. Snitch a.k.a. Stephen A. Smith, who also is a native New Yorker, he was very upset. And he took to his uh, his, his uh, show, his YouTube channel, the Stephen A. Smith Show, and he voiced his opinion on how he felt. Let's, let's listen to what Stephen A. Smith had to say about this situation. Did you read the story coming out of New York City? Did you read it? Involving Mayor Adams, Eric Adams, who I'm a fan of, by the way. I like him. But I don't like the story that I read over the weekend. And I think it's a story that can't be ignored. And it's talking about how $53 million in prepaid credits to credit cards are in the process of being distributed to migrant families. Now I understand what people are thinking about, what they're wondering about here. Because they're saying to themselves, what's the problem if you're on the left? There's a big problem if you're on the right. No, it ain't that simple. We have to understand that <clears throat> we don't want people eating out of garbage cans. We don't want people starving. We don't want people separated from their children and children separated from their parents. We don't want this. We don't want to be cruel and inhumane. But illegal immigration has become incredibly pervasive since the Biden administration has taken office. We all know that he's capitulated to the extreme left. And even though we wouldn't say specifically and definitively that the borders are open, every time you turn around, particularly in states like Texas and Arizona and to a lesser degree, California, it is an extreme problem. 
Well, guess where else it's a problem? It's a problem in New York City. My home. And I got to tell you something right now. If it wasn't for my daughter being there, I'd be gone. Don't like what I'm saying. So as you can see, Stephen A. Snitch, a.k.a. Stephen A. Smith, is basically saying that they're going Republican this time. My only issue with that is whether you're Republican or Democrat. Um, what, what, what is the Republican Party promising the black communities, the black residents of America? Um, is there anything on paper? Is there anything signed if they get in? What is there being promised? You can't just go over and just give them your vote. Um, I agree with uh, the Democratic Party. Not, not um, You sitting here giving them your vote and then they're just choosing these other people over you when historically you've given them your vote for nothing. But again, the Democrats told you years back that the, the, the largest number group, the rising number group would be the Latino community. So now they're catering, they're placating and catering to them. They don't care about the black vote no more because they know that the Latinos are going to outnumber us. That's just where it goes. But then you have a New York resident that took to uh, Fox News to basically show what's going on and complain about the way that these immigrants are getting away with committing crimes and everything else. Check this out. Think about this whole setup. I have a problem with that because we have people that live right here in our country uh, people with families and children, and they, they need that help. So for them to be giving it to uh, illegal migrants or migrants that's coming into the country and giving out this free money, what about the people that live here in the United States of America? But what, what makes it even worse, there's an attorney that's come to Fox News to actually show some of the privileges and things that these immigrants are getting away with when they're coming into America to commit crimes. Uh, check this out. I mean, it's crazy. Good question. Vic Bajaj to you now, because I want to play this video. A migrant who is accused, this is body cam video, by the way, a migrant is accused of killing a Florida deputy. He's now suing the deputy's estate, claiming he had a disability or not knowing English. That was the disability here. I mean, have you, have you heard of a case like this, Vic? Is there a case like this? Or are the lawyers just using these people to try to, to get a leg up on the justice system? Well, let me tell you how unbiased I'm going to be here. I'm a defense attorney, so usually I'm fighting the government against some fruitful or fruitless charges against my clients. This is throwing everything against the wall. Now, you don't have to be a citizen to have constitutional protections. Right. But you still have to have a righteous claim. Now, this individual, interestingly enough, Trace, was just declared incompetent by the criminal court. So the criminal case is on hold regarding the manslaughter against that officer who actually died from a cardiac arrest during this incident. Yeah. That's on hold. But the civil case is going perhaps short-sighted by the lawyers because his client or their client will have to be deposed to prove that case. Yeah. So it will come out of the bag. Now, we know there's no way in God's green earth could a black man in America, a so-called African-American man in America, be arrested um, um, where there was a cop that, that died and would get that same type of grace. That's just not going to happen, especially a taxpaying, a, ta a red-blooded black American, taxpaying American. He's not going to get that same type of grace. The media would be destroying him. They would be finding, they would be looking to find all kinds of damaging things about his past and why he was so wicked. And uh, they would show, they'd be showing that police officer's family and children and using the media to totally destroy the character of that person. There's no way in the world. But again, these immigrants can come here. You don't know their background. You don't know what's going on with them. And now all of a sudden you got an immigrant involved in a cop that died. And look at the grace he's getting. But not just that, in Harlem, uh, there was some there was some black residents that took a tour with a camera to show how these immigrants are living and where they're uh, uh, putting these immigrants up at. And you should see they're living it. They're living better than a lot of the residents uh, uh, in Harlem itself. Check this out. There are pictures. We, we got some pictures, and I know you toured this luxury building that is about to become a migrant shelter, and I want to put these pictures up because this is what's about to be in the Harlem area, a migrant shelter. But more concerning, I want to play some sound of an angry Harlem resident. Watch this, and we'll get your response.
We got enough shelters. We're oversaturated. And in every borough that doesn't have the same amount of shelters as we have, in every zip code, they have to come up and meet us first. Definitely, definitely. Before they even start moving. I mean, all they're saying, Tiffany, is it's not fair. It's totally not fair. It's totally not fair. I was one of the few uh, Harlem residents that went on that tour, and it's a beautiful location. And we have um, a housing project right across the street, St. Nicholas Houses, where they're getting ready to be relocated or displaced because they're going under renovation. So I did ask the mayor and I asked all the other city officials there, mm -hmm. instead of displacing the senior citizens or the people that are disabled, if we're going to make this a migrant or we're going to make this a shelter, period, why not yeah. make it for the people across the street in that housing project of over 3,000 people with people with disabilities and senior citizens, why not move them in there? Now, remember, one out of every four New Yorkers is homeless. They have they they have um, all kinds of buildings that they that they could have refurbished or fixed up uh, years ago, two years ago, in planning on bringing these immigrants here. They could have sent. They, there's so many places in New York that you could send them there. Why bring them into Harlem? Why bring them into the Bronx? You know, you got Staten Island out there with just a whole bunch of land. Send them out to Staten Island. You know, why bring them? Why bring them? Why bring them into Brooklyn, where places that's already overcrowded? You bring them there. And then when you show the camera the places that you're bringing them to, they're living in plush. It's, it's, it's just it's unbelievable. But, but again, I keep telling you guys, this stuff is about uh, garnering votes for the Democratic Party. And this is what they're doing. This is strategy. But you remember uh, not too long ago, um, they had that, em that video of the guy in Boston where he was complaining about them bringing the migrants. And he went to a migrant shelter to see if he can get shelter. And they, they denied him. Check this video out. But y'all gonna preach some other motherfuckers here? That doesn't add up. It doesn't make no sense. None. None. I'm homeless. I work a full time job, 40 hours, and can't pay to live here. How the fuck y'all gonna bring somebody else here? Don't make no sense. And this is why Chicago, Illinois, you have a black, uh, African-American black lady saying something like this. Has lived in Chicago her entire life. Kata, how bad is it? It's really bad. And the sentiment of most of Chicago is that of the young lady, one of the young ladies that you heard, uh, Jessica. Um, the sentiment of Chicagoans are, are the, is the same. And I just listened to the soundbite with Governor Prisker, who wants to blame Governor Abbott. But I think that we have to be realistic in thinking about what the state of Texas was going through before they began sure. busing migrants here. And I don't think we really think about that. So we're looking at it now as Chicagoans receiving migrants from the state of Texas. But imagine what it must be like in that state of Texas on a daily basis where people are arriving. Our president, uh, President Biden, has not done enough. He has not done enough to secure the borders. He has not done enough to go in and propose some legislation that he can uh, push forth himself mm. to change this situation. And I'm telling you, we're so angry here in Chicago, which yeah. has been a Democratic stronghold for most of its eternity. Um, this year, we're working to turn Chicago red. We are so angry with Pritzker and with President Biden and with our mayor that we have decided that we're going to vote Republican this time around. The one thing that has me worried is this woman is saying in Chicago that this go around, we're going to be voting for the Republican Party. Are you voting for the Republican Party with a plan? What's the plan? Or are you up disgruntled and upset with the Democratic Party? So you're just going to run right over to the Republican Party with nothing in writing, no plan, no nothing. This is, man, we got to be more cerebral. We got to be more smart. We see what's happening. We see the play that's going on. I've been telling y'all this, man. But people like Dr. Claude Anderson been giving us the blueprint. The ancestors already laid down the foundation of what we should do. 
but we don't study history, nor do we respect our ancestors. Dr. Claude Anderson in 1995 sat down in an interview and told us what was going to happen. He predicted this day. He said this was going to happen, how it was going to happen, and, and we were going to be a permanent underclass. Check this out. Arming predictions you make in the book is uh, is along those lines. You mentioned that blacks will be pretty much a permanent underclass in America by the year 2015. Why the year 2015? 2015 because what I what I've concluded from analysis is that there are going to be a converging of, of social factors nationally and internationally that's going to place blacks in a permanent status of underclassship. And one. We, we anticipate by that point in time, based on all the research that's coming to us, that the next generation of whites are going to be more anti-black than they've been since the Civil Rights Movement. Two, we anticipate by the same token about 86 million Hispanics coming into the United States and about 41 million Asians by that point in time, mm -hmm. which is going to kick black folk out of being the majority minority in the society, mm -hmm. uh, down to a minority minority. We've been number two in the society for 400 years as a group. We're going to become number four. And, uh, and if we have not gotten anything after being number two for 400 years, you guess what's going to happen when we become number four. Because at that point in time, all the new groups coming into America, they're coming in higher than we are because this country operates off of a preferential acceptance program, mm -hmm. which means that groups are coming in based on skin color, they're going from the lightest down to the darkest, light, yellow, brown, black. And that's what our immigration laws are based on. And black folk would not be able to penetrate through those groups to get to the white society uh, when that happens because those groups owe us nothing. They don't understand our problems and they are competitive with us and we don't begin to be a little more aggressive about being in a competitive posture. They're going to eat our... Now you heard what Dr. Claude Anderson said. And a lot of people don't even study Dr. Claude Anderson nor do they take this stuff serious. He said that we were the number two um, underclass in this country for 400 years and we got nothing. Now the Latinos are coming in to the point where it's going to be 86 million of them. Then it's going to be 40 to 45 million Asians. So we're going to go from number two to number four. And these other groups coming here have no allegiance to us. They owe us nothing. They don't understand our struggle. They don't understand our pain. Nor do they even care. Right? Then you have an influx of Africans coming in that don't associate with us. So where do we go from here? So I'm telling you people, you see it playing out right now. And I told you guys, study the Immigration Reform Acts of 1990, uh, 1986, um, all these different immigration acts in 86 when they let millions of uh, Latinos uh, 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 and people come in from South American countries. They let them come in at that time. Study the Immigration Act of 1990. But this was the time when the Republicans was allowing them to come in and the, the Democrats uh, were disgruntled and upset. Then you study the uh, Bill Clinton's 1995 speech about immigration. So this is nothing new, but the problem is, it's the way black people respond. What are we doing here? What are we doing? These are uh, videos that I've, I've been making since I've been on YouTube. From my George Making 1 channel to my George Making 2 channel, my Talking Smack TV channel. I had all these channels warning and forewarning and bringing information. Nobody cared because nobody... Black people, you guys out there do not care about things that's beneficial to you. you I had to come into celebrity gossip and the celebrity junk just to get uh, enough, just to build a bigger audience to give you this information. And that's, and that's sad. We can't blame the dominant society or the W man for that. We got to blame ourselves. So now you see a, a large influx of these immigrants coming in, coming into your community, bombarding everything. Now all of a sudden you want to lift your head about the sand and act like you care. Because now it's directly been it's directly uh, 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 um, in your way, in your face. And we was trying to warn you ten years ago, ten years ago. So I want the I want my people out there when we get this information. We got to come into gossip just to get you to listen. Something's wrong with you. We got to really pay attention because people like Dr. Paul Anderson and them been been teaching this stuff, man. And what happens is when we teach our history. YouTube comes after us. They take the videos down. They do all kinds of stuff. So we got to mask it with this. But leave your comments in the comment section. Let me know what you guys think. Subscribe to Street Media TV.